guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of December from the worst to the best. Now, December honestly was about a lot of recaps, rewinds, roundups, all of that. So I didn't try as much as I normally did, but I did manage to squeeze in nine palettes, which is a lot less than I usually have. Though I will say the caveat is because I did so many roundups, some of these eyeshadow palettes I'll be honest I don't think I got the opportunity to give them an honest honest chance some I did but there are some that I will mention that I didn't get to use as much as I would like just given vlogmas circumstances but regardless I am pretty firm on where these stand so let's start off with number nine this is from Revlon and this is the Big Bang Quad this has been in my pile of eyeshadow palettes to try for so long so I did I believe it was like a Q&A video and I use this. This is one that I haven't gotten to give a fair chance to but honestly I wasn't in love with the look that I created and I really wasn't in love with the formulation on this. It gives a nice pretty soft look to the eye so if you don't love a lot of heavy pigmentation you might really like this and honestly this isn't bad from the drugstore. I have a thing where I just really do not like drugstore eyeshadow formulas. I just don't think they're very good. This is like a decent one for sure and the colors are really pretty but I really wasn't moving by this quad so I don't necessarily recommend it. I'm going to continue playing with it and we'll see. There also is a few others in the line that I have in my collection so maybe my opinion on those will be different as well but these were a big fat okay but it does get the last place for this month. Number eight is from e.l.f. Cosmetics. This is an oldie but again one that I grabbed for just to test out. I had it lying around and I was like let's see what I think about this because it reminds me a lot of the Urban Decay Naked three palette. So the name of this is the e.l.f. Rose Gold Eyeshadow Palette and I think it's really beautiful the tones in here and I think the shimmers here are really pretty but I don't quite love the decision of the mattes that they put in here. The mattes were okay but I did find overall that when I was creating looks with this it just took me a little bit longer than it would normally to create an eyeshadow look. A lot of going back and repacking and reblending just because the mattes I feel like are very very light. This is the only deep shaded that they have in here and things just weren't blending as well as I would like. That being said, e.l.f. is extremely affordable. This palette is totally doable. If you aren't trying to spend a ton of money on an eyeshadow palette, I'm not going to discourage you from picking this up. Particularly the shimmers in here are really, really great, but I just didn't love it. I just tried a lot of other better palettes this month. That being said though, tis not a bad palette at all. Number seven is from Wayne Goss. I I know a lot of you guys asked me if I ever did a review of this. I didn't. I used it for the first time this month a few times. So I've really tested out the capacity of this. So this is the Tourmaline palette from Wayne Gotts. And unfortunately, I'm just not in love with this palette. I love the looks that I created from this. But I feel like all of the looks that I did create kind of looked the same. There really wasn't as much versatility with this palette as I had hoped. And I've just found some of the shades to look a little bit patchy on the eye. Overall... The look of the eye was always really pretty. It had a kind of luxury finish that was really elegant on the eye. But this shade right here got hard panned within the first use. And I can pick up the glimmer, don't get me wrong, but I really do find that I have to pack and pack it on to get a glimmer level that I'm happy with. Like these two shades, they looked a little patchy to me on the eye. This shade's pretty, but it's kind of just like there. This shade works good. This shade is fine, but overall I'm not really in love with the color story. The colors really aren't as versatile as I had hoped. I've just come to the conclusions that I'm just not in love with Wayne Goss's formula. I loved his pearl palette, but that more so has to do with the color story. I thought the color story was phenomenal, but again, the quality was just like, eh. So yeah, I'm not in love with this, unfortunately. It gives really great, pretty cranberry holiday kind of looks. I love the looks I got every time, but the journey to get there just wasn't what I was hoping for. Moving on to number six. This is the REM Beauty. Let me grab it. Eyeshadow palette. 
palette that I tried a lot this month. I don't know, it was sitting on my desk and for like a week I wasn't filming and so I just wore this because it was there. So this is the REM Beauty Midnight Snack Eyeshadow Palette. First of all, I'm not a fan of the aesthetic of the brand in general or this packaging, but let's put that aside and talk about the eyeshadow palette. It's a good palette. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I like the colors. I don't love the colors. But after that week that I used it, I really didn't feel inclined to grab for it anymore. I was officially bored of it. The quality on this is really great for the price. Very easy to create looks with, but I'm just not excited about it as I am with other palettes that I tried this month. And it does have to do with the packaging. I'm not gonna lie. I really don't like the packaging. It looks like a drugstore packaging to me. It feels a little bit better. The feeling is more high quality, but I don't like the look. And packaging is something that I take into consideration when it comes to eyeshadow palettes. But the quality is fine. The color story is fine. I just, I don't love it. I don't want to grab for it. Number five, I know some of you are going to be shocked, but I just wasn't excited about this eyeshadow palette. This is from Natasha Denona. This is the mini Biba palette, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous palette. I did like the quality of it. I liked the look that I got. I did a whole review if you want to check it out. So I do really like this palette, but it is a very boring palette to me. So when I think of Natasha Denona, I just want something that excites me and inspires me. This does neither, but it's solid, solid quality. But I'll be honest, I don't feel like it's Natasha's super best quality. If I swatch this with some of my favorite matte shadows from Natasha Denona, there's something about them that are more creamy and pigmented, whereas these are a little bit more skippy. They're totally doable and the price isn't bad. I'm not really mad at it, but this is just an average palette for me. The shadows are quite doable, honestly, but it's nice to have these tones within this palette, but it hasn't been one that I've been dying to reach for because I know I have these shades a million times over again, but if this is a color story that you're interested in, I do recommend it. Just didn't excite me. Now, Number four, this unfortunately you can no longer get a hold of, but I've been hanging on to it, waiting for the perfect opportunity to try it. And this one hasn't gotten enough use yet. I'll be honest, I've only used this twice, but I did want to talk about it. This is the NARS Climax eyeshadow palette. I've heard mixed reviews on this. I know some people love it, some people hate it, and I'm like neutral about this. I love the shimmers in here, and I love, 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 love the color story. This this is such a unique palette and that instantly is pushing it towards the top. Just the fact that I do not have a palette that plays with these tones totally inspiring to me. I wore this New Year's for my New Year's dinner and the main show of that was these two shadows, the green and the blue. Stunning look, love the shimmers in here. My reservation about this is I feel like the mattes don't stand out on their own. They kind of blend into mush, which I don't really like. So when I'm creating a look to get the most versatility out of this, I kind of have to stick to one color theme when it comes to the mattes, you know? If I mix these three together, they're gonna be really mushy looking. I kind of have to do either these these two or these two to get a distinct look to give each color a meaning in the palette. So I'm not a huge fan of the mattes in here, but I love the tones. I do have to adjust how I use it, but the shimmers are really, really pretty. So that's kind of where I stand with this palette. I still really love it though, just because of the color story. Update you that I did see that this did restock on the NARS website. I don't know how long it's gonna be there. But yeah, for the first time in a few weeks, you can pick this palette up if you're interested. I will have it linked in the description box for you guys down below. Number three is a palette that I tried out at the beginning of the month. Again, another palette that I didn't get to try a ton. I think I tried it a couple times after I reviewed this, but at the end of the day, this isn't a color story that I'm reaching for consistently. So this is from Viseart. This is the Etoile palette and I love it. The quality is fantastic. It's just, it's a bit deep for me for everyday wear, so it's not a palette that I'm reaching for all of the time, as you can probably guess, but this is a solid, solid palette from Viseart. I think it's such a fun, unique color story. I know Viseart definitely hasn't ever come out with anything like this, so I really, really do like this. The quality is really great. It's just not one that I'm going to be reaching for a ton, but they killed it with this, and I'm really excited about this color story. Even if I'm not going to use it a lot, I do feel really really, really inspired by it. So if it is a color story that you think you would wear a lot, please pick it up. It is so good. Number two is this absolutely stunningly breathtaking palette right here. This is from Florisys. This is the Oriental Shine Makeup Relief 
palette. It is one of the most beautiful palettes you will ever lay your eyes on and I've had a lot of fun with this palette this month. I think the quality is really great. Particularly the shimmers are what's going to amp up this look. The mattes are really really easy to use but they are a bit more on the sheer side. You can build them up. They're not amazing, but they are very, very easy to use. I think they're great for beginners. You're not gonna get a lot of powder fallout with this formula, but you do need to kind of go back and build a little bit. The shimmers though are just breathtakingly beautiful. So elegant, but still just subtly glimmery. I don't know how to describe it other than this palette I've been loving, love, love, love. The color story, the only thing that I have reservations about is because they wanted to get this artwork in, the amount of each shade is uneven and I wish like this shade and this shade were bigger and there's so much of the shimmery cream shade and I know I'm not going to use this much of the shimmery cream shade but other than that, love the palette. Alright guys, let's finish up with my number one favorite palette of December and for me this is the one that I was the most excited about. This is a Tom Ford Lava luster quad finally a good quad that tom ford came out with and then came out with a good one so this is a brand new formula from tom ford and i wasn't sure when i saw it online what it was really truly going to be like but how it looks online is how it looks in person except so much more beautiful these are like a true glimmer formula but you're not getting hard pan like other pop shades that tom ford wayne gosh charlotte tilbury they've all had those this well not get hard pan or at least it hasn't yet but these are just so glimmery shiny reflective and beautiful on the eyelid they aren't quite as glittery as the pat mcgrath glitter shades so these are almost more of like a wearable glimmer but you don't have any fallout with these and these are so beautiful just to pop on the lid for that extra pop duh i have it on my lid today and i just think it looks so pretty underneath the lights what i really want to see is him come out with this formula in other colors colors. Golds, I'm fine with. You know what? I wear a lot of golds, so I do like this color story, but oh my gosh, you could do some really, really, really cool color stories with this formulation that I would absolutely die for. Now this quad is $89. Is it worth it for me? Yes. I am a fan of the Tom Ford makeup line. I would suggest you should probably pick up a Pat McGrath palette instead of this Tom Ford quad if we're talking in, ter in terms of value. But nonetheless, I'm super duper excited about this palette and I really, really like it. I honestly do. So there we have it, you guys. A little bit of a shorter video this month, but those were all of the palettes that I tried in December ranked from worst to best. Did you try any of these? What were your thoughts? And I do this video every month if you enjoyed it. So if you did like it, go ahead, subscribe to my channel. You will see more. And that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.